and welcome everybody to the uh, October Trading Club meeting of the Lex Van Dam Trading Academy. This is uh, Lex Van Dam and James Hallowell, Head of Markets, um, and we'll be going uh, through a, a large number of slides as every month. Uh, this time we also have quite a few guests who are listening in, so some of the uh, concepts will be uh, explained uh, again, uh, so please bear with us. Let's immediately jump in. Uh, what's going on this year? Basically, 2015 is the first year since 1990 that cash is doing better than stocks and bonds. And we all know that cash is uh, returning pretty much nothing. So basically what it means is that, you know, stocks, bonds, uh, commodities um, are down on the year so far, the first, three month, uh, the first nine months. So let's have a look at it. Uh, here on, on, on the different uh, indexes that we that we monitor. The first one is the MSCI World Index. So that's a combination of uh, developed markets. Um, isn't that right, James? Developed markets, yeah. MSCI World? So stocks, basically, developed market stocks. Yeah, yeah. So that's down 5% on the year in local currency terms. Uh, last three months have been horrific, down 11%. Then we look at the Global Hedge Fund Index. So that's the, uh, the expert hedge fund managers. They're down on the year. Um, having been up uh, the first six months, they've, they've given it all up uh, over the last three months. Um, if you invest in uh, corporate bonds, then you, uh, again, would be down on the year. If you've been in sort of more um, lower rated, higher yielding bonds, you would be down on the year. If you've been in uh, commodities, you've been totally destroyed, down 16.5%, uh, mainly coming from the, from the last three months, uh, would you be in... Emerging market currencies, you'd be down 15% this year. And even if you've been in property shares, which is relatively safe, property is still hanging in there, uh, you would also be down. So it's been a, a pretty horrific uh, year, and especially the last three months have been very bad. So this is something I was asked the other day, on just on the subject of cash. So when, when we talk about, or you hear on uh, financial media, people talking, pundits talking about um, you know, returns for cash, is that literally as, as straightforward as the return you get in a, in a current account in the bank? Or is it sometimes more money or investments that can be made in short-term bonds and, and instruments, which do return a little bit, maybe a little bit more? Yes, I mean, if you put your money in the bank on, on a savings account, I mean, depending on, 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 on the country that you are, but if you, exp if you look at the US or Europe or the UK, you know, if you get a percent or two percent, there'd be a lot. If you are in an account that, that returns more than that, then you're probably taking some sort of risk that the bank might not be explaining to you. I mean, if you want to put your money in, 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 in Brazil, in the bank, you got, you're going to get a lot more, but then you own Brazilian reals, and if you've done that, you, you would have lost a lot of money this year. So basically cash at the moment is, is, is returning uh, pretty much nothing. But, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously better than... Uh, than pretty much anything else uh, this year, which is the first time since 1990. So Granny putting it under the mattress would have uh, <laughs> would have done okay this year compared to uh, yeah in the financial markets. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I mean, obviously, we wouldn't recommend uh, people putting money under the mattress. We're not that worried of the banking system, but uh, yeah, Granny would have done okay. So obviously, uh, what's been very important in driving markets uh, over the last uh, five plus years has been quantitative easing. The central banks have, you know, issued uh, is, is, have been buying back uh, bonds, uh, putting money into the system, and that money has gone pretty much everywhere, and it's really supported uh, equity markets and bond markets and commodities. And if you look at uh, what has been going on between QE1 and the end of QE3, so that's basically the end of uh, of the Fed uh, increasing its, its amount of uh, buying of bonds. You saw in the first period, equities were up 20%. Fixed income was up 6%, uh, high yield globally, which is like the, the, the more risky uh, fixed income, up 18%. Commodities were up a bit, dollar didn't really move, and real estate investment trusts, so property in the US, up 30%. So that's pretty amazing. However, QE3 has, uh, has obviously ended. Um, and what's happened since? Well, equities globally have done nothing or, or have, have, have not been able to go up. They've gone down. Fixed income has gone down. Commodities have absolutely collapsed. Uh, the dollar has uh, has rallied, has been the big beneficiary. Everybody's going back into dollars because there's less dollars around, um, and that's been going on since uh, since the end of QE. 
not uh, not 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 a great market. Really bleak. Hey? It makes it makes it apparent just how much markets have been driven by quantitative easing and how reliant they are or dependent they have been on it as well. Exactly. And so that's that's the case has been the case in the US with the Fed, it's been the case in, in Europe, it's been the case in Japan and still the case in Europe and Japan. And it's been the case in the UK and in the UK it's obviously the market is uh, performing uh, the, the economy is performing much better. So over there it's also pretty much the end of QE um, at the moment. So yeah then you really have to worry if you still want to own equities in, in, in those markets. And again, like here we look at uh, different currencies because a lot of you, uh, a lot of members uh, don't just trade the euro and the, and, and the, the yen and sterling. They also like to go a bit further out. So Brazil, Ukraine not that much, but Brazil and Turkey, New Zealand and South Africa are favorites amongst the, the, the people we, uh, we uh, work with. And yeah, Brazil, you've lost 33%. So if you moved your money out of a U.S. savings account into a Brazilian account, you know you might have received eight percent interest. Um, you would have lost thirty-three percent in 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 in, uh, in converting it back to to dollars. So you'd be down twenty-five percent. Ukraine, obviously, there's been uh, you know a lot of problems with uh, a lot of problems with Russia, uh, Turkey next to the Middle East. It's not really working for them. All the Syrian refugees over there. And uh, the, the the Kurd is uh, you know conflict. Malaysia has had some issues internally as well, and New Zealand dollar is really the the the, the G10 one that had done so well before, and that this year, um, even, even though it has a high carry, so you would have received the most interest of of, of the big currencies, you still would have been murdered on the uh, on the exchange rate. If if you have a look back at the charts um, for New Zealand bonds. Um, versus the currency, you can see the interest rates pull away a few months before the the currency really collapsed. So the I think the bond market stepped in, going back probably twelve right. eighteen months at least, and said, look, it was pretty clear. So if you have a look back at that chart, um, that's quite a, a good one to demonstrate the relationship between the two. Um, so lower interest rates driving uh, driving the currency level. Yeah, and, and a lot of people were long the New Zealand dollar, and as soon as they realised that uh, okay, interest rate is still high, but it's 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 going down uh, because of Australia, because of of China, um, people starting to liquidate this uh, in massively. Yeah, so yeah, a lot of people, like I said, like look at look at currencies that we that we work with. A lot of people look at stocks. A lot of people look at fixed income, and. As we go through this, we'll be looking at a lot of, uh, we'll be looking at all these different asset classes.